episode of it. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of you here this morning. I'd like to take uh, a moment and welcome all of our guests. We're very glad to have you with us today. And um, just, again, if there's anything that we can do to uh, assist you in any way, uh, for you to get to know our family here at Lutheran Church of Our Savior or anything else, please feel free to ask. Uh, we'd love to be able to spend some time with you, any of the any of the family members, that's any of the people in the pews or anyone up front. We'd love to be able to, to get to know you a little bit better and uh, to hear your story and share ours as well. A couple quick announcements before we get started today. Uh, one is for Easter flowers. The sign up for that is out in the lobby uh, or the narthex just beside those double doors that are on the far side of it uh, on that little cabinet to the right. They're there, uh, so you can sign up for that. Also, midweek Lent services, we're having them each and every Wednesday during Lent, 5 o'clock. We're doing Overheard series, and I believe this week we're going to hear uh, conversations from three people who, uh, well, show up, because it's going to be interesting. <laughs> and um, we'll see how that ties into Jesus' uh, crucifixion, but also uh, maybe ties it in a little bit closer to ourselves as well. Uh, five o'clock is the service, and then immediately following that, about 5.40, 5.45, we'll have soup and salad together over in the fellowship hall as well. And there's plenty of food and desserts, so please join us for that also. Um, parables. Parables are stories that use common everyday things to reveal deeper meanings to us. And as Jesus went about proclaiming that the kingdom of God was at hand, he used parables to describe what God's kingdom was like. So we often hear things in Jesus' teaching like, uh, the kingdom of God is like, or what should I compare the kingdom to? In order for us to gain a deeper knowledge of God's kingdom and also hopefully a deeper faith walk with Jesus into his kingdom, each Sunday in Lent and also during on uh, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, we're going to be looking at some different parables of Jesus. This week, we're looking at two short parables. Uh, they're about great treasure. The first one is a treasure found in a buried field. The other one shows up in the form of a pearl of great price. Jesus' connection to the kingdom of God reminds us of the great cost that was willingly paid for that which is really important. As we begin our worship today, and as we bring our praise to our loving God, I invite you to stand as you're able as we begin with our opening prayer. And we pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your only begotten Son into this world to purchase us and purchase for us all the glories of your kingdom. Help us to value all that Jesus has done for us and all that he's preparing for us far more than anything this world could ever offer. Help us also to remember how precious we are to you and to share that good news with those that you put into our lives. For we ask that it may be so in the strong and sure name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We begin our worship today just as we began all of our days in the Lord at our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening song, Jesus, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. <laughs>
Too often we treasure the things of this world more than the kingdom of God. And so right now, let's pause to confess the sins of our hearts and lives to our Lord who hears and who forgives. We pause. Most merciful God, we confess that we are sinful. We value possessions more than we value your grace. We value the things in this world more than we value treasures that are stored in heaven. We value money and wealth more than we value your word. We show what we do and by what we leave undone that we are undeserving of that we by our selfishness, we have sinned against you and against others in thought, word, and deed. Forgive us, most holy God. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave up the glory of heaven and came to this world to purchase you with his holy and righteous blood. His perfect life, his crushing crucifixion, and his glorious resurrection mean complete forgiveness for the sins of our hearts and lives. Because he treasures you more than all the riches of heaven, know with confidence that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. to be here with you today. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, 55, verses 1 to 9. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make you with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for today is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, and verses 2 through 11. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoer. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But 
whatever gain I had, I count it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel for today is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard the gospel of our Lord, let us confess our faith together in the affirmation of faith. I believe in one God, united on high, ruler of the heavens and the earth, full of grace and mercy. I believe in the Father, who has created me and all that exists. I believe in the Son, who has redeemed me by his death and resurrection. By my baptism into his name, I am saved from sin, death, and the power of the devil. He who of God and man, my Lord Jesus Christ, is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who daily sanctifies me. He blesses me and guides me as I live my life in the body of Christ, the one true holy apostolic church. On the last day, he will gather me and all believers, even raising them from the dead, into heaven, where I will live in holiness and blessedness forever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing. <laughs>
you are more precious than anything we have here and we pray that you would pour out your spirit on us and remind us how precious we are to you bless this time bless the words of my mouth and bless the thoughts of our hearts and the actions of our lives that they might they might be pleasing to you for we ask it in your holy and precious name well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You who have ears to hear, listen up. That's what Jesus says. This Lent, we're looking at some of Jesus' familiar parables and what they mean in light of his passion. And as we look at them, it's interesting to see how, um, how our lives, our, our life experiences influence how we interpret those uh, parables and what Jesus intended to mean in them. Because many of Jesus' parables are, are usually pretty easy to understand. Um, after all, we're, we're pretty familiar with uh, the common everyday things that he uses in many of his stories and can easily apply those spiritual truths that he's trying to make. Um, other times, Jesus just tells us plainly what he means in the parables. And, and those, by the way, are probably some of our favorite parables because we don't have to do a lot of work. We want to understand what Jesus uh, is saying, but at the same time, um, not have to guess at the meaning. So those are pretty easy for us. There are also other parables, though, that make us more uncomfortable because we don't know exactly what Jesus means. We hear those parables and uh, tend, to, tend to come up with questions when we're done hearing them, uh, like, what did he mean? Or does it mean this interpretation or this one? And can they both be right? Well, like it or not, some of Jesus' parables, um, he says in such a way that they can actually have more than one meaning. They can be taken more than one way. Jesus left some of the parables ambiguous. Uh, and he did that on purpose. He did it on purpose so that we as his listeners can put ourselves with our life experiences into his stories. And we come at them from our unique perspectives. And that idea shouldn't be too surprising to us, though, as, as we think about it, because we often read other parts of the Bible that way as well, right? We uh, bring what in Latin is called tentatio. Uh, it's, it's, it's our personal experience and, and struggles of life. Uh, we bring that into our reading of Scripture and, uh, and it apply it to our understanding of the Bible. God then um, speaks to each of us differently through those same words um, in different life experiences and, and situations. Maybe even in our own lives at different times in different ways. Anybody ever had that experience? where you read something once and it means something, and then maybe a couple years later you read it again and it has, uh, brings a little bit different meaning to it. It's because your life is in a, a little bit different place in those times. It's kind of like how God speaks to different people in different ways uh, in sermons. I know I've heard and I know other pastors often hear people say things like, thanks, Pastor, that was a great sermon. It really spoke to me, especially when you said such and such. You know, and, uh, and I'm usually like, I don't remember saying that, or at least in those words, but hey, I'm glad, I'm glad God used it to speak to you. Um, and then other people come up with, something different, you know, and that happens in the way God applies his word. That's, that's why we call it the living word of God, because he, he brings it into our lives and speaks to us in different ways. Um, and the two parables in today's gospel, uh, the one of the hidden treasure and the other of the priceless pearl are, are like that. 
See, both, both parables have similar storylines. Uh, something valuable is found, and whoever finds it goes to great lengths to own and possess what was found. And over the years, uh, I think, for the most part, these two parables, uh, the people who've heard them have kind of come down in two different camps uh, about the meanings. And they both, both those meanings have validity. You can find uh, backup in other parts of the Bible for both of them. Uh, so that means both meanings are true depending on how you're hearing them. Because I think if Jesus had only one meaning in mind, he would have been very clear uh, what that was. But he doesn't say, and so we're left to interpret it ourselves a little bit. And so as we look at today's parables, um, let's look at them, say, from the perspective of two different people looking at, picture a series of pictures up there. We've got these lovely windows up there. Picture those windows being the passion of Jesus. Okay? So there, these two people are looking at a series of paintings on the passion of Jesus, and it starts off with uh, his arrest in the garden. And then the next picture is him being beaten and flogged. And then there's one of him being mocked and spit on. And another painting shows Jesus crowned with thorns and wearing a scarlet robe. The series continues as he's led to the cross where both people look at the paint, at that painting and know he's laying down his life for them. Now, with that in mind, let's picture those same two people hearing the stories of Jesus' hidden treasure and the priceless pearl. With those pictures in mind, a man finds a treasure hidden in a field. He sells all that he has to buy the field and own the treasure. A merchant in search of fine pearls finds one and sells all that he has to own that pearl. See, both of, of those people have brought something different into the experience that they're having as they look at those paintings. And they both hear those parables. And each of them walks away with a different message. Both messages are true. Both messages have deep meanings for the hearers. And Jesus says both are true. The first person has struggled for years, feeling worthless. They remember the time when they were a teenager and an adult said that they'd never amount to anything. Their job, well, it's a menial job and they just kind of go through the motions. It's inconsequential and doesn't have any fulfillment in it. And the boss, well, he daily criticizes. You're not good enough. You're not doing your job well enough. And that doesn't help. The person wonders if they're loved anymore. Their spouse and their children always seem to be too busy to pay attention to them. They feel like they're just a servant to clean up. Maybe a chef to cook and a chauffeur to drive. Or, or maybe just a deep pocket to supply. For that person, as they watch Jesus painfully go to the cross, they hear his parable that says, they are the treasure. They are the priceless pearl. Jesus has sold everything for them. He laid down his life for them because they are so valuable. Jesus would leave heaven and die on a cross. That's the message that those parables say to somebody who hears it from a place of guilt and shame and doubt and feelings of inadequacy. 
Somebody burdened by sin. Somebody loaded down with the cares of this life. In that, those parables, they find themselves tremendously valued, not only by God, but by others in their lives. The other person, the other person looking at those passion paintings may have a different take on Jesus' parables. For him, they reveal what he's known all along, but now can fully express. He doesn't see himself as a treasure in the parable. He sees Jesus as the parable. Jesus' sacrificial love has made Jesus the most valuable treasure to possess. He looks and realizes that that Jesus did all of this suffering and all of this sacrifice because of his sins. And it overwhelms him. He looks at Jesus' passion and understands more fully the words of the hymn. Jesus' priceless treasure, source of purest pleasure, truest friend to me. And I don't know where you are sitting in your pews today or watching us at home. But as you look at Jesus' passion, as you think ahead to his arrest and his brutal beatings, as we'll come together and see him innocently condemned to die on a cross, and as we watch his lifeless body being laid in a tomb, hidden behind a stone, as it's rolled shut over the entrance of that grave, what message from those parables do we see? What's most valuable to you in the moment that you're in right now? See, one of these two meanings may be just what you need to hear today. Maybe it speaks to the needs that you're struggling with or that you're filled with as God speaks to you in your life in this particular moment. However you're hearing it, though, hear me when I say this, because I want you to know this. You are loved. You are dearly loved. God says you're his dearly loved son and daughter, and you mean everything to him. Jesus went to such a length that he laid down his glory of heaven for you. And the proof of his love is in an empty tomb. The empty tomb of Easter morning. But you know what? Once you know that, once you have confidence in that fact that you are God's dearly loved child, it wouldn't be too surprising for you to be seeing that parable that Jesus, from the perspective of Jesus being the most valuable treasure of your heart and life. But you know what, if you don't know that yet, if that's not the confidence that you have today, all you have to do is look at the cross and the empty tomb, and there you'll see how much God loves you. He did it all for you, and I pray that knowing the true love of Jesus may be a reality in each and every one of your hearts and lives today and always. I pray that the love of God would guide, guard, and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and your life everlasting. Amen. We do have a God who is very precious to us, but also says that we are precious to him. And he wants to hear the joys of our heart. He wants us to bring our praise and thanksgiving to him. But he also wants to bring all the, us to bring all those cares and burdens that are on our hearts as well. And so right now, uh, we're going to stand as you're able as we bring our prayers before the throne of our Father in heaven. At the end of each petition, I'm going to say, giver of all good gifts, and you'll respond with, thank you for making us your treasure. God, God who gives, 
the gift of the greatest treasure. Help us to value your kingdom more than we value the things of this world. Remind us that you value us so very much that you sent your only son to pay the price for our sin and to purchase each of us for the kingdom of heaven. That you might call us your dearly loved sons and daughters. And that is who we are. Giver of all good gifts. God who gives the gift of the greatest treasure. You are the ruler over all the earth. And your kingdom will never end. But Father, as we look around in this world, we know that Satan continues to wage war against us, even as we await your coming again. And so we pray that you would guide the rulers of this world, that all people would remain free from oppression and live in peace. We lift up those engaged in war, especially those in the Ukraine today, and the rumors that are swirling in other parts of the world as well, Lord. Satan works in the hearts of people to bring oppression and persecution. And we pray that, that those people that he uses would be stopped. We pray that your love would reign supreme and that Satan would be blocked from having his way. Father, as we struggle in this world, we pray for godly leaders who would seek peace and justice. We lift up to you all leaders of the world, including those right here at home, that they would seek to do your will in all ways, all things. Father, we also, Lord, lift up to you all those who are refugees. Be with them. Watch over them. Bring them your peace and your glory. Giver of all good gifts. God who gives the gift of the greatest treasure. Your church is the place on earth where the truest, truest treasure of mercy, peace, and forgiveness is to be found. We pray that you would use the gifts that you've so generously given to us in our life to strengthen our faith but also to help us to value others and to serve them be with us and bless us as we as we seek to meet the needs of those who are needy and homeless or hungry lonely or afraid in our communities father Help us to use all gifts to your glory. Father, we also thank you for the gifts of life and love given to us. And we lift up Jerry, Joseph, Jotsi, Jane, and Ray as they celebrate their birthdays this week, as well as Bill and March Lewis as they celebrate their anniversary this week. Be with and bless them. And be with and bless all of us as we use each day for your glory and for the furthering of your kingdom. Giver of all good gifts. God who gives the gifts of the greatest treasure, we know all too well that we hold the tre treasure of faith in our bodies that are jars of clay. When we are broken, ill, or needing healing, please make us whole. Father, we lift up to you right now all those struggling with cancer, COVID, and other diseases of body, mind, and spirit. Those who've gone through surgery or facing it. Those who've gone through illnesses or are recovering. We lift up Marshall Moody, Terry Wolfley, Kathy Hine, and all those we name before you now. Father, you know all those people on our hearts, those we've named and, and those we have. We also know that you have many others on your heart and mind this day. We pray that you would heal them according to your good and gracious will. Continue to be with them and their families. Surround them with your grace. Your grace to accept the afflictions 
as blessings from you that lead us closer into our walk with you. Giver of all good gifts. I thank you for making us a treasure. God, who gives the gift of greatest treasure, we remember the saints who've gone before us, who now possess in all reality every treasure of the kingdom of heaven. We lift up before you all those who mourn the loss of life, loved ones, and we ask that you would enliven all of our hearts, that we would follow after those who've gone before us and receive the same heavenly treasure. Giver of all good gifts. Gracious Father, confident of your love, we place all of our loved ones, all else that you know we need as well as all of our prayers before your throne of grace, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ loves us so much that he couldn't stand to see us left in our sin. And so he came. He came to be our Savior. He comes to us in plain and simple ways, just as he explains the kingdom of heaven in those plain and simple ways. He comes to us in an amazing way, though, even in the plain and simple, in ways that we don't fully understand. That's why on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of Remembering his death, his resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming again in glory. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may be seated as we invite those who are assisting with uh, our worship service to come forward first.
And now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith and your life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Amen. If you would, please rise. We're about ready to go back out into the world, but we go as God's dearly loved children. That is because we are his greatest treasure. And in that, we find the confidence to know that God is our greatest treasure. So that we go out to live, live for him. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious on you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing song. <laughs> presence the fact that he loves you and nothing can ever change that so if uh, you have questions about that if you're here in person please feel free to talk to me if you're online please uh, feel free to contact us at the information on the screen in the meantime go in peace and love to serve our Lord and Savior Amen. Amen.